In today's quiz, we're looking at redox reactions and electrochemical cells, keeping in mind that for electrochemistry to happen, what we need is to get the energy out of the movement of electrons, and that can only happen with a chemical reaction when we have one species losing and one species gaining electrons. That is a redox reaction, and that's what we're going to be looking at here. Uh, in the first question, we want to state the half reactions that are occurring. And when we have this electrochemical cell notation, note that it really does emphasize the two half reactions, the oxidation and the reduction. And we can see that on both sides of the double line are those specific half reactions, though not quite complete yet. And on the left side, we have the oxidation. So this is copper becoming copper two. And on the right side, we have gold three becoming gold. And so it really emphasizes one side is being oxidized, the other side is being reduced. And here for the copper, we want to balance this in terms of total charge, and so we need to show the electrons to have a full half reaction. That requires two electrons on the copper product side, right? Copper solid is losing two electrons to form copper two plus, missing two electrons, and so we have two electrons that are left over there. And for the gold to go from gold three to solid gold, it needs to gain three electrons. We need to put those into the reactant side. These are our half reactions. And from this, we can see that copper is being oxidized. It's losing electrons as it goes from copper to copper two. And gold is being reduced. It's gaining electrons as it's going from gold three plus to gold with no charge at all. Uh, and so now that we have these half reactions, we want to state the balanced chemical reaction and say whether it's a redox. And so let's take those two half reactions. If we want to combine into a balanced chemical equation, the half reactions are where we want to start. And note that we can't just add these two together because then we'll have one electron left over on the reactant side. And for a balanced chemical equation, we never have any electrons that are showing up in the balanced chemical equation because there are no electrons that are piling up or being demanded in the net for a redox reaction. They're always going from one species to another species. Uh, and so to do this, we need to multiply reactions in a way, multiply the half reactions in a way that the electrons will cancel out. And that requires multiplying the top by three to give the following, and multiplying the bottom by two to give the following. And we do this in order to get a common number of electrons on the product side of the oxidation and on the reactant side of the reduction. So when we add together, we're going to cancel everything out, cancel the electrons out rather, and give us the following. This is our balanced chemical equation. We now have copper balanced, we have gold balanced, and we have the charge balanced. And implied by this redox reaction, which this is a redox reaction, we know that six electrons are being transferred, right? Three coppers are becoming three copper two plus, and since there's three of them and they each lose two electrons, those move to the gold. Those six electrons are being applied to two different gold threes, each of which is gaining three, and everything kind of works out. Okay, so for the next part of the quiz, we want to calculate the standard cell potentials. And so we have this schematic, right, or this notation for our electrochemical cell. We want to know what is the potential of this cell or how much voltage do electrons feel as they go from one side to the other and indicate whether it's spontaneous, meaning the electrons will go automatically by themselves spontaneously or that we would need to apply a voltage to get it to occur. And so what we need to do is we want to look into Appendix L from OpenStax Chemistry and we get both of these half reactions. Note that Appendix L only contains reduction potentials and so while we may be looking for an oxidation, we're not going to be able to find it and what we need to do is just take the copper reduction that's shown there as that will be what we can use to get our oxidation. The gold half reaction appears exactly as we had it before, but the copper is a reduction from the table and we need an oxidation. And one way we can do this is we can just reverse it and we can say, oh, well then the half cell potential is going to be the negative of what it was before, right? We're just switching the reaction and we're changing the sign of the cell potential. This is fine to do and we end up with the following. And here's what we have for gold, right? Gold is exactly the way it was. Copper, we've reversed because it's our oxidation. So we've reversed the reduction and as doing so, change the sign of the half cell potential. 
Uh, once we have this, we simply add through, right? We know that the standard cell potential is now going to be the sum of these two half cell potentials. One is a reduction, one is an oxidation. We do not want to multiply the potentials here. While that will inevitably affect the energy out of the reaction per mole, it's not going to change the voltage, which is a measure of how much energy each electron has. And because of that, multiplying a reaction to show that it's you know, losing four electrons, six electrons, whatever, that doesn't change how much energy each electron has, and that's what the voltage represents. It's an energy per coulomb or per electron. Okay, um, what if we were to change the anode here with a zinc electrode where we oxidize uh, zinc, how would the cell potential change? So let's instead, for our oxidation, investigate zinc, right? And we have the following. From the previous, right, we do get a positive cell potential, which means it's spontaneous and therefore is going to generate uh, energy, right? The electrons will move through this reaction with a voltage, right? They'll generate energy. Uh, from appendix L for zinc, again, you know, here we have our half cell reduction potential. And in order to get this into a balanced electrochemical cell as the anode, we want to reverse the direction, flipping the sign. Again, we haven't changed gold, so gold is going to be the exact same. When we add together, we see that we get a voltage of positive 2.260 volts. This is higher than what we found for copper. And what this means is that this reaction is more spontaneous. Uh, and in other words, zinc-2 wants to be oxidized more than copper-2. Therefore, when we use it instead of copper, it will be a more spontaneous electrochemical reaction. We'll get more energy per electron out of the electrochemical cell assembled with zinc compared to assembled with copper as the anode.